Russell Westbrook. When you hear that name, you probably think of his explosive dunks, triple doubles, MVP seasons, or how he took the NBA by storm for over a decade. The nine-time NBA All-Star, two-time All-Star MVP, nine-time All-NBA teams combined, two-time scoring champion, gold medalist, I could go on and on about Russ's greatness in his Hall of Fame career. On the other hand, we got the most scrutinized NBA player in the game right now. You might think of his extremely underwhelming season he just finished, or how he has been on four teams in the past four years. His hot head, his iconic interviews with reporters, or just him not being able to shoot for his life. I mean, the man got nicknamed Russell Westbrook. Like, come on now. But with all jokes aside, if we've learned anything about Westbrook over the course of his career, is that he might be the most vacillating NBA player we have ever seen. Now, with no teams wanting him at all, and just five years ago, Russell Westbrook was an MVP and arguably the face of the entire league, you might ask, what caused all of this? I mean, it's even crazy to think about that the Lakers can't even trade him without plugging in a first round pick into the deal. But with that being said, it's not one thing that caused all of this, it's multiple things. What's going on, everybody? Everybody. Bucket Media back with another video. Make sure if you enjoy this video, like, comment, and subscribe while checking out any other videos I have. In this video, I'm going to explain how Russell Westbrook, who won the NBA MVP five years ago, went from being the poster boy of the entire NBA to now being the most unwanted player across the league by every single NBA team. First reason for Russ's downfall is his unwillingness to adapt to new teams. From the very start of Westbrook's career, he has been a ball dominant player and frankly only knows how to play with the ball in his hands. And honestly, that's just me being nice. He's just a ball hog. He's never been in a situation where he was not the main ball handler or put in a role by his coach to be an off ball player and have plays ran for him to get open looks at the basket for lobs or backdoor cuts. You also need to look into what his playing style is. Russell is a 6'3 guard who is a below average shooter, does not have a high basketball IQ compared to the other players in the league and relies on his athleticism to get to the basket off of breaking players down one on one. If any teammate like LeBron or AD have the ball, Russ's man can just help and not worry about Russ hitting a shot because bro is a 29.8% three-point shooter. Like, nah, that's actually crazy. Russ could still be able to be an effective player on the Lakers if you look to cut to the basket more easy for open layups. And the perfect opportunity to do this is when LeBron has the ball in his hands, which is like all the time. Instead, Russell stares at whoever has the ball and waits until it gets swung back to him, only to have five seconds left to settle for a bad mid-range shot. Although Westbrook definitely has some blame on him, I do think he is being over scrutinized by the entire NBA fan base, and I think that the fit with the Lakers was just horrible from the start. When your three best players are all non-shooters, and you take into account that you don't have any shooters on your team, it really minimizes their options as to what they can do on the court. But nevertheless, Russell's actually been playing pretty bad this season, and a lot of the Lakers' problems start with Russ, and how he cannot buy into a role or taking a backseat to LeBron and AD is a huge problem for them going forward, and if he doesn't address that, it'll really affect them this season. This leads me to my next reason for Russell Westbrook's downfall, and that's his ego. Now I know we can say that Russell has always had that ego to him, but when your game slowly starts to regress and you keep that ego and are not willing to make improvements in your game to adjust or to take constructive criticism, it is a problem. I feel like Russell never respected coach Frank Vogel, who's the former coach of the LA Lakers before getting fired, and he would not listen to him, and he even admitted to not having a connection with him, therefore he was not held accountable. And I'm not sure what his issue was with me, or I'm not sure why, but um, I can't really give you an answer why things we never really connected. Maybe, you know, um, that's something that he has to answer, but I never, you know, from the get go was feeling like I was having to like try to prove myself to him and my capabilities and what I've been able to do for this game. And it's unfortunate, but it's really not I kind of out of my hands. Also, Westbrook has always been a player who's focused and centered around putting up numbers. Whether or not those numbers actually help and translate to team wins and good basketball, Russ's primary focus always was still put up numbers. While he was in OKC and he had all the pieces surrounding him, we all praised him for it. He averaged triple doubles three seasons in a row and that's all we could talk about and he won an MVP for it. But now, when you go to LA, especially when you request a trade there, you must be aware of what you're getting yourself into. The lights are going to be on you, the cameras are going to be on 
around you, you're playing with LeBron in your hometown, it's a lot of pressure. And those numbers and amount of shot attempts can't be put up anymore when you play with LeBron, especially since you're ball dominant. Which circles back to my first point, is that he never accepted a role, and that is a huge problem. Another reason why Russell Westbrook's career got derailed is his wear and tear. As we previously acknowledged, Russell's game is predicated on his athleticism and getting to the rim for dunks. If NBA history can tell us anything about players who rely on their athleticism while being the star of their team, it's that they do not have longevity in this league. That was shown on full display this season, as we did not see Russell Westbrook, the same one that we were accustomed to seeing, and the one who attempts those crazy dunks and gets straight to the rim using his quickness with ease. I mean, simply, the fit has nothing to do with that. It's just him aging, and there's nothing you can do about that. But nevertheless, he still could make adjustments to his game. But that's not what we're talking about right now. But to cut Russell some slack, he's about to enter his 15th year, and he is 34 with multiple surgeries in the same knee. So that in itself is impressive that he's still playing. But nonetheless, if you're in the NBA, you're in the NBA. And with a player like Russell, we do have big expectations for him. And it does have a lot to do with his regression. But like we see from most athletically dominant NBA players, they usually put in the work on their jump shot. We see guys like Giannis, Paul George, especially Paul George. I mean, he had that injury at USA, so he had to get a jump shot, even though he already did, but just improved it more. Derrick Rose as well. I mean, he's not a lights out shooter, but still could shoot, you know, decently well. And just overall, like every NBA player you see that ages, they just have that maturity to their game. And, you know, Russell doesn't have that. He still plays sped up. He doesn't play with pace. You could tell that he could rely too much on his athleticism. And, it doesn't work after a while. And like I said, for the unwillingness to make adjustments to your game, you know, that's a huge problem. And that jump shot that, you know, he has to work on, like that's a huge asset for him going forward. So if he doesn't work on that, you know, that's gonna actually be a huge problem. And I really do wanna see Russell get a jump shot because like other NBA executives are saying, if he doesn't get a jump shot, he very well may be out of the league. You can get out of this league just as fast if you're not producing, no matter who you are. But not only did he not shoot well this season, he was shooting career lows this season. His free throw percentage regressed tremendously from 80% to 66%. And as a guard, that's huge. You gotta be hitting free throws, especially when your main scoring ability is getting to the basket. It, you're gonna get fouled a lot so 66% you know that's unacceptable to make matters worse he paired that with a three-point percentage of 29% and I've been seeing a lot of skip Bayless backlash on that Russell West brick nickname but you know he's really earned it if he doesn't hold himself accountable start raising those percentages like I'm, I can't blame skip for calling him Russell West but overall, the real conclusion of what caused Russell Westbrook's regression is a mix of all these factors. I mean, Russell has always been the same player. He's always been a ball dominant player who must have the ball in his hands. All of his weaknesses that we are seeing right now, like his ego, lack of jump shot, unwillingness to buy into a role, minus the wear and tear, you know, that just comes with age and his playing style. They've always been a part of Russell's game and couldn't really see it when Russell had his own team around him, when everything was ran about him. And he did play like the same, just more athletic. And we weren't giving him any backlash when those numbers were being put up because at the end of the day, numbers are numbers and we praise that. Whether we should or shouldn't, we still do it. Once he got traded to the Houston Rockets for Chris Paul, the weaknesses were a little more visible when he was paired with another ball dominant guard in James Harden. After that, each year he got less and less opportunities to be the man of the team. And now we're here. I'm sure you loved watching Russell in his prime, like I did. And do I think he can get to that level again? Probably not. I think those years are behind him, just due to his body breaking down, but also how he carries himself. Do I think he's on the path to getting out the league if he continues this? Yes. Throughout NBA history, we've seen this from players, you know, a lot. Guys with egos, guys who weren't willing to buy in. And you know, they're out the league, they're going overseas just like that, and Russell's no excuse. Maybe he's getting opportunities right now because of his name, but with how he's playing, he could be out the league just like that. But do I think Russell can still be an impact player and a high-end starter in this league? Absolutely. Russell has all the intangibles of a star. He has the playoff experience, the motor to give 110% on every play, but he must buy into a role and accept his best days are behind him and to be willing to sacrifice his glory for the betterment of the team. On top of that, Russell must put in more work in the gym on his jump shot to become a threat from the three point line while hitting free throws. Combining this with his finishing package and his ability to get past defenders, which he still has, I think he really does have a lot to offer for a contending team. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video and you enjoyed, please consider smashing that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and comment 
on any video suggestions for the future or anything I could have done better. I'm always open to constructive criticism, unlike Russell Westbrook. I'm just joking. Make sure to also comment on anything on this current topic. Let's get a great basketball conversation started. Also, thank you for making it past the 10 minute mark of this video. I know this video is pretty long, and I really do thank you for that. I hope to see you on the next video, and have a blessed day. Peace.